Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the nerd core. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Welcome back. You're listening to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast reviews, movies, and talks and nerd shit. This is episode 307, and it is your spoiler review of Mandalorian season one here on the Nerdcore. Yes, I know this usually happens on the live show, but I'm sorry. We have not been able to do a live show for a while because of just stuff. But as always, it is the Nerd Chicana here to host the show along with my wonderful co host, Young Yoda. Hi, everybody. This is the only episode where I get to uh, actually say, Make the baby do the hand thing. Make the baby do the hand thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is awesome. Well, look, we're going to get to talk about Man and Lauren today. We just, dude, it's been crazy here on the feed. It's been really tough having to, uh, what's it called, stay organized with everything because it's just holidays and stuff. So we want to thank you all so much for being patient. And you guys seem to have a lot of content to be listening to now, especially those on the Patreon. Yep. Go and check yeah. out the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nerdcore. Hours and hours for your ear holes. Yep. So if you guys are like, oh, I have nothing to listen to on New Year's Eve, you are not looking at the right place for it. So, uh, us. Yeah. How are you Which doing today, bro? I'm, uh, I'm pretty good. I'm not bad. Yeah. I went into work. Um, it was snowing and raining, so work was boring as shit. But I am here talking with one of my best friends in the world to end the year off right Mm-hmm. So yeah, all right. Well, you know how this goes. This show just finished on the day that we're recording, so I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have not watched the finale yet. So please, 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 please do not get spoiled. And that means if you do not want to get spoiled, you're gonna have to stop listening past this point. And well, that's it for spoiler warning. It it is is in effect in a five. Four, three, two, one. I have spoken. Okay? We're spoilers here. We're all spoilers here. Look, man, this is the first live action television show for Star Wars. And they had a lot of room to play here. And they did some pretty good stuff and they did some pretty bad stuff. But I think overall, man, this was a solid first season. And I can't wait to see what the second season breaks, Brad. I, I, all I can tell is um, I can't wait for season two of the Baby Yoda story. Yeah, pretty much. Baby Yoda show, right? <laughs> uh, although, with this ending, y- you know, with the whole necklace thing and all that, I'm starting to get the idea that the Mandalorian is not the Mandalorian. I'm starting to get the idea that Baby Yoda grows up to be the Mandalorian. Really? Or- so we're starting off on his journey to becoming a Mandalorian because, as they said in the story, it's not race or cre- or creed or anything. It's more of a religion. It's more of, mm-hmm. you know, I-, I want to follow this way. And if he grows up in that form or manner, mm-hmm. maybe Yoda could be a Jedi Mandalorian. Yeah, which, by the way, it once happened in the history of Mandalore. There was Jedis. There was Mandalorians who were adopted into the Jedi Order. And I thought it really great. Like, they finally came out with the last episode, and I it finally clicked what a youngling meant. Because mm-hmm. you're thinking, oh, it's just, you know, they're kids when they grow up. <laughs> no, it's it's all these yeah. young kids that they find from these wars, and they save and protect, and they help them grow up. But yeah. Yeah, the foundlings, man. It's crazy. But look, I... There was some episodes that I definitely did not like, and there was one that I just thought was okay. I did not like 4 and 6, and I thought that 5 was just okay. But I think that even though this show did have some rocky places, it still really, really knew how to close it throughout the season, dude. Um, Yeah, I mean, overall, I this is the whole reason I have Disney+. Plus. Yeah. I am... 
and I'm not sad about it. Like, I will continue to have Disney Plus since there's a season two coming out in mm-hmm. fall 2020, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And also, holy freaking crap, the Darksaber. So, dude, I'm pretty sure you do not know what the Darksaber is, right? Um, I, I, I'm I guessing it's the Katana. No. So, what's it called? There was a Mandalorian that actually was in the Jedi Order. And they, this is an ancient weapon that goes back to years and years and years of Star Wars history. Like, this is probably the second oldest uh, lightsaber. It was created before the fall of the Old Republic, bro. So we're talking thousands and thousands of years. Hmm. So it was passed, like, you know, it was, it was part of, what's it called? It was, it was adopted by this one dude, and I can't remember his name. And then it went on to this other guy, and even Darth Maul held it at one point. Ooh. And then now it is in the hands of um, I can't remember his name, but Giancarlo Esposito, his character. Gideon. Gideon, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, yeah, Moff Gideon. He, by the way, most badass name ever, dude. <laughs> oh my god. I, I mean, I mean, you know, we've lost a lot of uh, pretty pretty epic villains this year in the Star Wars uh, franchises um, mm-hmm. throughout these years. And, I mean, you're not going to find a much better actor to play a villain. Than freaking Giancarlo Esposito, right? Exactly. He's awesome, dude. <laughs> we lost a lot of people in this series as well, dude. We lost uh, Gil. Oh, man. Dude, that was possibly the saddest moment I've ever had in this series, dude. Like, seeing Gil just laying there just dead. and then I have spoken. I have sp- he he has spoken. Uh, uh, that I I literally just I I was I was so sad yeah. after that because the, these stormtroopers just come up. They they grab Baby Yoda. Uh, they kill him and leave him there. And he was almost to the ship. And you're almost like, there. No. And and then and, and then it, the, how we opened the the next episode of the finale. <laughs> And they're just hitting Baby Yoda? Like, I was like... I'm like, wow, these are really some true government employees right here just sitting around talking to shit, being like, yeah, he's still mad, don't come here. I'm like, okay. Yeah, Or and then he just hits Baby Yoda, though, and I was like, oh, we're about to have a problem. Are you going to keep on hitting Baby well, Yoda? Yeah, and then the droid comes up, and um, he might have went a little far, but I was kind of okay with it. <laughs> yeah, of course you're putting the hands on Baby Yoda. I just yeah, love how that other stormtrooper was just like, I just want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I thought I thought that whole that was that was some very much needed humor after mm-hmm. the whole ending of the the last episode. That those two stormtroopers just made that whole episode just hilarious. Yeah, I, I got to say some of the humor was not hitting as well in this mo- in this episode. But and again, I'm not a big fan of the humor that Taika Waititi uses, but I, I still really like the banter between the two stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because once again, it's just it's probably how I imagine stormtroopers spend their time. Like, come on! But yeah, dude. I mean, this what? no, and the whole they're trying to shoot the can or the bomb or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And one dude's missing, and you think the other stormtrooper is going to pull out his uh, his gun and actually hit it? No. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. But, God, I just love that whole... I love that little bit. That was great. But, uh, what's it called? <laughs> but I, I love all the parts with Baby Yoda in the, in the ship where he almost crashes it or he's playing the thing. He's, like, clicking stuff. And, like, Baby Yoda was just the greatest creation this year when it comes to Star Wars. I Like, him and Babu Freak. I mean... I mean- I mean, just the memes that came out of it made mm-hmm. him possibly the greatest thing to come out this year. Yeah, and um, you realizing I, that your whole being was a your whole existence was a uh, spoiler. It was a spoiler. Um, yeah, I can't wait till they show him growing up, and then um, everybody be like, "Young Yoda," and be like, "Yeah, yeah, I was here first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, dude, I'm telling you, man, this what's it called? This uh. This show has so much going with it. You know, the whole Western samurai feel to it. Very lone wolf and cub. Uh, the gunslinger and er- everything. It had everything going to it, man. It was literally you know, an episode copied Seven Samurai. So, you know, like. And that was probably one of my least favorite yeah. episodes, actually. Yeah. Because it was, 
it was meh. You know, I, I was not a fan uh, of that episode. I thought, you know, I love Cara Dune, by the way. Her character is amazing. I love her. Yes. But uh, also, you know, Gina Carano is an incredible actress and she plays her so well. I just, that episode was just, it just felt so off to me. I, I mean, compared to all the other episodes, it just, it, it was, it just, it's pacing or something just was not as no. great with it as was the other episodes. It's just, it didn't yeah. work. And this is coming from a Kurosawa fanboy who immediately saw it as seven samurai with, uh, with two, two samurai, but the episode just did not work. Yeah. And I got to say that as well for the episode six, which was the, uh, one where they're going to go get that one guy, which. Honestly, oh yeah. 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 The, the one where, um, the, the young guy, it, it, it feels like that episode felt like it was just filler. For no reason. Yeah. Which, by the way, incredible direction by Rick Famuyiwa, by the way. Because there were some very, very horror-esque type scenes in that one. Especially when they almost, like, they almost run off with, with, with Baby Yoda, the whole team. And mm -hmm. Mandalorian has to kill everybody one by one. But uh, that felt like so much like filler. And then the, the episode five, which was the, gu the, the, um, the gunslinger, that one was like, okay. I, I just I, I just was like, oh, this was just the one to introduce that there's somebody looming in the shadows that could possibly be a bigger threat, which was, of course, a mob, mob Gideon. Yeah. So uh, I really did enjoy. I enjoyed the episode, though, with Bill Burr. One. Um, yeah, that was the one I did not like. That that one I thought was OK. The the one I didn't like, I didn't like the um the one where he's basically training or trying to get the young guy into the guild and the young guy turns on him. Yeah. Which you could have seen that going a thousand miles away. And the other one mm -hmm. was, um, the seven samurai, uh, remake, spoof yeah. or remake. Yeah. Uh, those but my, two, my those favorite... two, I did not like, I liked the bill Burr one. Not, mo not for most of the story. I thought that one also was kind of filler, mm -hmm. but I did like bill Burr's character. I liked his acting in it. I, I just love how there's possibility of Space Boston. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We need a Harvey Keitel. Bring yeah. back Bronx Judas. Yep. If there's Bronx <laughs> Judas, there's a Space Boston, my friend. My favorite episodes, though, and I think it is the rising star of, of, of this whole series and possibly one of the best, uh, what's it called, uh, directors working right now with, with Lucasfilm. It's episode three and episode seven. The Denver two episodes... Yeah, the episodes done by Deborah Chow, who will be doing the Obi Wan series, they're incredible. They're everything I love about Star Wars. And holy crap, I 100% believe that this woman, this woman is going to freaking hit the Obi Wan series out of the park. I think they should just give her a movie. 100%. At this point, give her just whatever off, she just wants. Off those, just off those two episodes, just give her a movie. Just give her give her whatever she wants because she's incredible. Those three those two episodes are are awesome. I I I, I thought the pilot was okay. Uh, episode two was was pretty good. I like that one. I mean, three. I mean the the pilot was the pilot was just there to present to us. This is the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. So nothing real risk taking in the Mandalorian. Not like episode two and three and basically oh we're giving him a baby and get. Mm -hmm. Is Yoda. I think the pilot was just to show us the budget as well. It's like, look, this is real. This is happening here. This is a big budget Star Wars show, and and it's and it's here on our service. And this is basically the premise of what we want to do here. It's it's to me, it made sense to have that episode and then episode two in the same week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, I I what's it called? I really like the finale. It's not the best episode, but it is a really good finale. The, the last I, episode. I, I, I enjoyed it. You you had um it wasn't as good as episode seven, of course, mm -hmm. because that one just ended on such a sad note and just it it was the cliffhanger of yeah. the series. Um yeah. just seeing baby Yoda but, on the floor, dude, it makes you sad. Oh, uh, and you're like and he almost made it to the ship and that was the whole thing. It's like you couldn't at least had him make it to the ship. Like yeah. really and it's like okay. Uh episode eight though. I, I thought it ended well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew there had to be another death or sacrifice. And yep. the fact it was a droid 
And you could see where the Mandalorian, who had hated droids for very obvious reasons, <laughs> when they show the droids killing like everyone in his village, including his parents. Mm-hmm. Which that was a great scene with with the um, Mandal- Mandalorians uh, coming out and basically saving him and mm-hmm. destroying the droids. That was cool. But the the whole sacrifice of the droid and the Mandalorian even going so far as to tell him that there has to be another way. I don't, I you know, you've been a friendly droid. You've been a good droid. Like yep. I don't want to lose you. And the droid's like, there is, there's no other way. Like yeah. we can't fight out of this one. This is the way. And also the fighting scenes between the that other Mandalorian and the Stoom Troopers. Oh my god, that was badass. Oh, with the, with, with the, the fucking sledge, with the blacksmith? Yes. Yeah. You kind of saw that coming. You're like, she about to kick their ass. These yeah. guys can't even... Because they had already shown, like, the dudes, they could, like, be right on you and still miss you with a oh, shot. Oh, of course. You're Storm Troopers, bro. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So that that was awesome. This had some really awesome fight choreography, and uh, I I love that Baby Yoda was able to use the Force on the fire, and then he took a nap after that. Yeah, and then I I, I just like some of the little comedic parts of it. The the one where he's like, "Well, just have uh have the baby do the hand thing," mm-hmm. and, and they just go to a close up of Baby Yoda, and he's like picking up his hand, and it's like this is doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, dude. Um, also just Carl Weathers in this show was pretty good too. I can't wait to learn more about him. And yeah, we got our confirmation fall 2020 will be the return of Mandalorian on Disney plus. It will be Mandalorian season two. I can't wait to see this show again. I just, I just loved the cast. I loved it. I love Gina Carano. I loved, uh, you know, Giancarlo Esposito, Werner Herzog. I, I, everybody in this show just stood out to me and I really, really enjoyed what they did. You know, it had some episodes where there was, like, you know, some episodes that weren't that great. But, you know, it's it's still a very solid opening for Star Wars in television. As a whole, I think this series is a definite must-watch for any Star Wars fan. And for really anyone who kind of wants to get dip their toes into Star Wars if they haven't yet. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, Star Wars has been around forever, so what the hell. But, anyways, if you want to start off... This isn't a bad one to do it with. Yeah. This is uh this is kind of a lighter feel. You get a you get to see the love everyone has for Baby Yoda and why. And uh, I mean, I think John John Favreau and Disney, they they have come into this I, I think on this show mm-hmm. than the Rise of Skywalker did in the whole movie. J- John Favreau and Dave Filoni need to take over uh, the creative side of uh, of Star Wars. They need to be the ones in charge. They know exactly what they're doing because this finale to me was better than The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, agreed. 100%. I, I think they should be the ones in charge and I can't wait to see what else they bring. I, I know in February, so, you know, pretty much Disney Plus is rendered useless for me now because there's nothing for me to watch anymore. Until yeah, you, could, you could always watch them up at Christmas Carol. I mean, uh, yeah, well, I'm not a big fan of Christmas movies. So, or uh, Treasure Island. Eh, eh, eh whatever. Eh, eh, Muppets, man. How can you hate Muppets? Muppets are cool, man. I'm just not a big fan of Christmas movies. I'm not a big fan of Christmas music. I'm not a big fan of Christmas movies. You know I mean, good- I understand that, but a Muppet Christmas Carol is like the greatest Christmas movie ever. Yeah, I don't care about Christmas movies. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, in February, I believe the Clone Wars returns. I'm going to be binging Re- Rebels and Clone Wars to catch up on that stuff. But it's still, I, I love this. I, I can't wait to see more of uh, Mandalorian. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give Mandalorian a strong 8.5 out of 10. I think that it still had some bumps in the road, but it's a very, very solid first season of, of, of a Star Wars show. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to one-up that with a 9 out of 10. I mm-hmm. agree. It wasn't perfect. Um, but it's definitely got me hooked to watch uh, season two and see mm-hmm. exactly where Baby Yoda ends up. Yeah. Now, I ask you one thing, Brad. What's it called? Uh, Baby Yoda, of course, is the, is the best part of the show. Do you think that uh, the Dark Saber will be in the hands of Mando in season two? Because a Mandalorian was the original person to have that, to to hold that lightsaber. <sighs> And you um, think someone's hand's going to get chopped off? 
it, it's Star Wars. Somebody's hand is inevitably going to get chopped off. We haven't but, seen a um, good cutting hand, a gun getting cut off in a while. Yeah, we didn't, even, we didn't even get to see it in the, the Rise of Skywalker. Spoiler alert. There's no hands getting chopped off. Even what though at hell? one point I seriously thought it was going to happen. I mean, I think they should have made it happen and just been like, reattach with force. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or heal. heal it. Baby Yoda can heal you with it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, but um, I did like... I'd say yes, but also I think we forgot to mention the whole sigil finally because they're now two, so he got the the Rhyhorn. Oh yeah, the Rhyhorn sigil. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also got his jetpack. Oh yeah, you got his jetpack too. That was so, so those, cool. Though. That that was cool. Um, but do I see the dark side? Yeah, I'd I'd say I don't I don't really want to see this baddie go out um quick like nah. that. So maybe in a season three we see it. Or do you think that Baby Yoda's going to hold the, the dark saber? That's my question: is how they go forward with this. Um, because my theory right now, and people might call me insane, is that the Mandalorian is actually going to be Baby Yoda growing up into the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Like, the, like his tutor is not the Mandalorian; he's the Mandalorian, and he gets brought up into that life. Yeah. Um. So my question is: Are we going to see a time leap? My question is, are we going to find out, because of Baby Yoda, are we going to find out more about Mandalorians that were in the Jedi Order? And possibly find them. Because remember... I I mean, because he's going to be searching. That's the whole premise. He's being sent off to search for uh, his kind, Yoda's kind. I can't wait for him to get to Dagobah. (laughs) Which, I I mean, he's going to be like, what the fuck? And, when he gets to Dago and he finds out how swampy it is, how hot it is, he's like, what the but, hell? But we didn't think any more of Yoda's race existed. We thought Yoda was it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, same here. Uh, we really did think that was it. That was his only kind. Um, but I, I think that I, we're going to find out more about the man learns that were Jedi, Jedi Knights. I think that, what's he called? Yeah, Yoda might be, baby Yoda might be able to control more of his force powers now. And yeah, I I think we're gonna see just more cuteness from Baby Yoda. Well, yeah, I, I think so too. But I I mean, because from what we've seen, I don't think there's a lot of Yoda's kind existing. If there is, because everyone's going, what the fuck is? It? <laughs> if they did, and if they did, they would have been they would have been executed during ex- yeah. Order sixty six. Yeah. So uh. Yeah, I I just I think next next season we're also gonna start seeing how the first order rose, rised up, you know, rose up. Yeah, I, I mean, which is gonna be cool to see mm-hmm. because we we saw the the end of it in the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, spoiler mm-hmm. alert! Oops. <laughs> yeah, Brad doesn't know how to <laughs> keep his mouth shut. Apparently, <laughs> oops! I didn't say how it ended though. I spoiler alert, spoiler warning already is up by now. I spoiler, I mean, spoiler episodes already up by now for that. So you guys okay. go watch that. But yeah, look, man, it's been awesome. What's it called? It was an awesome episode, an awesome season. And I can't wait to see more of this show next year in the fall. And yeah, guys, uh, we're here at the end. My phone just literally turned off, so I do not have our producers for the month. I'm gonna try to name as many as I can. But here we go. Our December producers, because you helped us out get a new laptop for myself that I still don't know how to use that well, are Ninja Flippy, Man Captain Pokey, Esports Phoenix, Emerus, Literally Nico, Pages, Pages Beaston, um, Brown Rice, 1996, 96, and Sarah M with two A's and E M M. I believe that's it. Uh, did you say Bryce? Yes. Yeah, so Bryce is an executive producer, and Sarah's an associate producer. So is Cassie, an associate producer. A Grayson Barker, 98, and Warlord him and Warlord, one bar on Instagram and Twitter. Those are for Grayson. He's an executive producer along with Shane. Where can they find Shane, though, Brad? You can follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash SWRWK or on Twitter at SWRWK Twitch. Yeah, and this has been our review of The Mandalorian. And it's been really fun. You guys can go check out all the other f- content we have on the YouTube channel, on the website, nerdcore.com, and all that awesome stuff because we're just we're, we're going to bring a lot of stuff in 2020. We're going to bring videos of the, of the show now and because I finally found out how to do a better version of that. 
But uh, we're also going to uh, make sure we bring more Star Wars into your lives because we're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. But, you know, I don't know when this episode comes out, if it will be on the 1st or the 30th, but I hope you guys have a safe and wonderful New Year's Eve and everybody stay safe and watch Mandalorian. I will just keep on watching Baby Yoda memes and clips. What about you, Brad? I'm just going to watch Baby Yoda drink martinis. Yeah, yeah. uh, God, I just I love that when he's drinking the soup, man. I love that. I mean, that has led to so many just laugh out loud moments of, yeah. oh, I got to send this roll. And it's like what you look like when uh, you don't know where to put your piece, your urine sample at the doctor's office. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's he's amazing, bro. It's the one thing that Star Wars received this year that absolutely had everybody losing their mind, just like Babu Freak. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Without further ado, it's been an urge gone. I'm sorry, not. And I hope Baby Yoda slash Young Yoda sends you into the podcast void. All right, Ro. Thank you for being host as always. Thank you to all our listeners out there, all our Patreon supporters. We truly appreciate each and every one of you. And to end this episode, I guess I'll just uh, tell Ro to do that hand thing and Young Yoda out. <laughs>